Okay. So, um, I'm going to switch role to student view. So, this is exactly how you see the website. Okay. So we have completed the orientation and uh, you, and, oh, that's right. And you did an outstanding job on your outline. So um, the elevator speech outline was your practice. So you got basically either 15, 20, or 25 points. 25 means you're getting it. You may still have a few things that you have to work on. 20 points means there are quite a few areas that you need to still develop. And 15 means you probably just didn't follow directions at all. All right. So that was just get you in there and start actually using an outline. And that's why I wanted to introduce you to Abigail upstairs so that you know you can go to her and you can get help. So I recommend that you actually go to her to get help before you submit the one next. So right here, the highlighted section is what we're in right now. When you miss class for whatever reason, if you are absent, you are required to do an assignment that's posted. All right. It will be uh, the, what we cover in class today or that day. Okay. And so you're going to see there was one posted for last Thursday because you were not here on Thursday. <coughs> so you all should have done that. <coughs> um, and then there was one earlier in the week for the students who come on Thursdays. Okay, so you only come on the days you're not here. So <coughs> if you have to miss class for whatever reason, <coughs> Let's say you come down with COVID, God forbid. Um, <coughs> sorry, I got you um, do these assignments online. All right. So you look right here, and this is um, extra notes for the lectures. <coughs> and readings for you to read. When you read these assignments, like the, when you read these lecture notes, that is a, con, um, a breakdown of what we're gonna cover in this module. <coughs> and to help you understand what the speech is all about. This is the grading rubric we're gonna use for all speech outlines. So if you lose this yellow one, all right, it's right here for you. And you can, wherever it is, all right, it's not coming up, so I will fix that. Um, <clears throat> the grading rubric is very detailed. Every outline is worth 25 points. Every outline uh, is broken down into sections. So at first, it seems like I'm being really, really picky, and I am, all right? And the reason is because I want you to develop a really good habit. I want you to know how to do this correctly. So if for some reason you still struggle, you can always come and see me. Um, Jasmine sent me her outlines through email, right? Jasmine? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So Jasmine and I were BFFs last week. So she was sending me her outline. I'd give her some feedback, you know, things that still need to be corrected. She made those edits. She sent it back. Is this right? You know, et cetera. That is why I'm here. All right. Because developing your outlines is just like writing speech, uh, writing um, English papers. It's recursive. You have to keep trying. You have to keep getting better. You have to keep making edits. All right. So this is the rubric I will be using. Now I'm going to be really picky on this first round of speeches. So as soon as you submit it, 
um, you're going to need to send me an email to let me know that you've submitted it so that I know now to grade it. All right. Uh, so what I do is I go through and I grade it and I make comments. And you're going to find that I use a, um, a code for giving you feedback. If you see a plus, that means good. You did it. Well done. If you see a dot, it means, well, it wasn't bad, but it's not great. So it still is an opportunity for you to get better. If you see a negative, it means it's missing or um, it really needs improvement. It's just not cutting it. You're also going to see that when you look at your text, all right, on your outlines, um, on here, if I have something circled, if you see a circle, so I'm going to send it to you as a PDF. When you see it circled, then that is your red flag that says, oh my gosh, I got to fix this. All right. If you see that I have underlined things, that is good. All right. The underline means that I see it, it's there, you did it well, it's complete, etc. So always remember that circles you need to work on, underlines, you got it. Okay. Um, so that's the grading rubric, and I just gave it to you, and I will make sure to um, fix this for you. Um, if, for instance, you are nervous about giving speeches and you get what's known as stage fright, there is a TED Talk as well as a YouTube video that talks about how can you calm your nerves. Now, we'll talk a little bit about that later in the semester. But since this first speech is going to be videotaped with nobody around, okay, you can just do it in your bedroom, all right, um, but make sure your background looks good. Um, and that's excellent. That's fine because this is your baseline. This is what we need to see is how you speak right now. If you were speaking in front of a class, and that's where we know um, areas for improvement. That's what we call the delivery. All right. If you are nervous about standing up and delivering a speech, I am. I still am. And I have spoken to thousands, okay, when I used to do conventions. And it always makes me nervous, still, even today. So that just means you care. That just means you're good. But there are different strategies that when you look at these two videos, you're going to see that there's techniques that you can use to get control of it. And every one of you is going to have to use a different strategy. What I use may not work for you. And what you use may not work for me. Because it's all in our head. Okay, now pause. Ooh, very, very important. Before you videotape your special occasion speech, read this document, all right? This document is going to give you a checklist for what you need to do to make sure you look good on video. If you are ever interviewing online, this is also something that you can use as a checklist to help you prepare for an interview. You know, so you want to be professional and poised. You want to use some actions, some nonverbal communications. Your words will matter. So select your words carefully. And your setting, and that's the background. And how do you look? So dress for power and influence. Dress for power and influence, not for success. Dress for power and influence. If you wear your sweats, you're going to be counted down. All right? If you wear just a t-shirt, you're going to be counted down. You should look the part. All right? So if you're giving a toast at a wedding, you better be in a shirt with a collar. All right? That's your special occasion speech. If you are saying congratulations to your grandparents on their 50th anniversary, you should be dressed up nicely. If you are receiving an award for the ESPYs or some, you know, Oscar or something like that, dress up, play the part. 
That's getting in costume. Public speaking is a performance. Did you all hear that? It's a performance. Okay. Yes. Well, that's what we're going to do when we get to the end of class, is we're going to do an impromptu. And that, no, you don't have to. But but your special occasion speech is not impromptu. Yeah. But yeah, if we're just doing one in class, you don't have to worry about that. But you should always be prepared to be called upon, because you never know. All right. Um, here is um, a sample interview. And let me just pull this up so that you can see. Um, Okay, here's an interview that was done with me, and I just want you to notice the background. Okay, so see, I've got flowers in the background, my head, but you also see enough of gestures. I got my hair done, nothing is in my face. So you still see the audience, nothing is a distraction. Um, so this is a quilt I made that I'm very proud of. Um, so you just want to set it. That's what we mean by background. Okay, and that's an example of how you should look on video. You don't have to be standing, all right? So think about when people are speaking on, on um, television shows and things like that, they're usually sitting down. Now, if they're a stand-up comedian or they are um, you know, a host of a big show, they may be standing. But the kind that you're going to be doing for this and for your very last speech, you can be sitting. If you want to stand, you can. Just always remember, do you see how high my um, camera is? That's on purpose, so that when you go home, open up this camera, um, this video that I just recorded, when I upload it, and you're going to see that it is showing, um, you know, it's up high, because you don't want to be looking down here and delivering your speech, nor do you want to be looking up there and delivering your speech. It, your camera, your phone, or your computer should be eye level. All right, so for this speech, um, here are the instructions. So remember, you didn't know what to do? Well, here's what you do, all right? Um, you will be graded on the delivery. 15 points is going to be with confidence and expression. Five points is um, familiarity, which means you do not read your speech word for word. You have a conversation with your audience. And um, your speech, five points just for making it within the time frame. It needs to be at least 30 seconds long and don't go over 90 because you will lose all five points if it's under or over. All right, and here's some examples of types of special occasion speeches. Okay, so um, here is. Uh, nobody's done that. Uh, okay. Here's where I will give you feedback on your uh, um, actual delivery of your speech. You are going to be watching your classmates' speeches on video. <coughs> and I will explain this to, <coughs> to you um, next Monday. And um, this is where you upload the URL for your speech. Okay. <coughs> Make sure you give your name. Make sure you give your name. All right. So that's where we're at right now. Any questions about this first speaking assignment? I'm going to stop the recording.